Um, yeah, yeah. The, the flames came through the car and, and it was just terrifying at the time. It, um, I could feel my face actually getting burnt. I could see the flames all around me. I could, I could, I could feel the warmth and the heat waves and, and I was breathing in the, in the fumes. I could feel it burning my throat as it came through. It was, um, it was a horrible experience. But um, I knew what I had to do to get out of the car. We, we have a cool suit, we have a helmet fan, radio and water that's all plugged into the car, not to mention the seat belt. And um, I pretty much just grabbed the seat belt as, as early as I could. Tried to grab the, the net that's, uh, that's there for safety. Um, I missed it the first, first time and I got the door handle pretty quick. I didn't even bother undoing all the other auxiliary things. I just, I just bailed out of the car as quickly as I could. I ripped... Um, I ripped the, the sockets out of the, the cool suit, the helmet fan came, ripped off, the radio and the, um, the water just pulled straight out. So um, typically, you know, at Bathurst or Phillip Island, the endurance rounds, you, you know, you're very methodical with how you do it. On the cool down lap, you, you plug them out nice and neatly, but in this situation, I, I just didn't have time. I, um, I took one deep breath towards the end there because I knew the the oxygen in the side was inside the car was depleting, and um, I could feel my eyes, my eyes burning, my eyebrows, my face, and I just jumped out of the car and I ran as as, as quickly as I could. And Sam, my number one mechanic, was was there waiting for me when I got out, which I was so thankful for. Um, he forced me onto the ground to do the. Uh, the, uh, the standard fire procedure. I did a bit of a barrel roll and got rid of the flames that were on me. And, uh, and, and then from then on, it was just, uh, yeah, I guess that was the hard part of it. Cool. Uh, look, I, I rolled up on the grid and a typical uh, warm up lap as you, as you do every warm up lap. And, uh, the pit crew got on the radio to me and told me uh, the green flag was out. That's generally my signal to grab first gear. So I grabbed first gear, clutch in. Um, we've got a line locker for the, uh, to load the clutch up on the brake. So I was on the brake and started finding the biting point on the clutch. And um, the five second board came out, red light came on. And it just seemed like a lifetime that it was on. And in that time, the, uh, it must have been the clutch fluid uh, boiled and unfortunately the clutch failed because of it and I, I was left standing there on the spot like a sitting duck. But it hasn't really shocked me all that much. Uh, I don't know if that's concerning or not, but um, uh, yeah, it was a big accident. Everyone I've spoken to said it's one of the biggest they've ever seen. and. And having seen it as many times as I have, um, yeah, as I mentioned, I, I'm really lucky, I think. It could have been so much worse. I'm so thankful that I was wearing all the appropriate gear, the fireproof underwear, the three-layer suit, gloves and balaclava. And, and, you know, I've come away with some injuries, but it potentially could have been so much worse. I got stuck in the car for a little while. It seemed like an absolute eternity while I was waiting to get out, the, um, the seat itself had melted to my suit, the suit had melted to the seat belt, uh, I couldn't get the belt undone. I eventually got out, but it, it just seemed like such a long time before I was out of the car. I'm pretty confident I'll be racing at Winton. It's three weeks away, thankfully, and not two weeks, which has been typical. Um, you know, had it happened at uh, Clipsal, it definitely would have made the Grand Prix the following weekend. So. Um, I'm seeing a specialist in the morning, uh, Dr. Fiona Wood. She's um, a renowned burns specialist in the world. Um, she should be able to give me some guidance, but thankfully the medical crew at the track were able to, to get onto it very quickly. Um, they work so efficiently out there and um, with burns I think it's particularly important to, to get onto, uh, onto the injuries as quick as possible. I've spoken to a few guys, some people say oh, they might be able to, to repair it, but most, most people say that it's, it's a write-off. So uh, it's unfortunate, but at the same time my crew said, look, cars can be replaced, the um, human body can't be. So again, just very thankful that the standards of our cars these days are, are very high and, and the safety equipment that we use and, and the efficiency of all the, 
all the staff and crew that uh, all the you know fire and rescue crew, crew that were able to come out. It's it's always a shock when you have a big accident, and it's been a, a very long time since I've had one. I um, probably the last major accident I had was in 2003, actually here at Barbagello. I ended up at the same hospital. I had some severe lacerations on my legs, and I broke my back as well. Um, but my mentality, and, and com as competitive as I am, it uh, if anything, it gave me more motivation to to get back on the horse, so to speak. So this this situation is no different. Um, it is a shock at first. I'll, I'll have a bit of time to recover, but I'm 